In the last couple of videos, we've looked at nomenclature of different types of systems that we will be describing as aromatic systems, starting with derivatives of benzene and then continuing with what we refer to as aromatic heterocycles, where one of the atoms in a ring is not a carbon, but instead is an oxygen, nitrogen, or some other heteroatom. And now what we're going to look at in this video is how we go about recognizing and naming so-called annulenes. What do we mean when we say annulene? That's the first thing that we need to discuss here is this term is probably new to you. What we mean when we say an annulene is we are referring to a fully conjugated ring. And this fully conjugated ring can be a ring of any size. It could be as little as four carbons. It could be as large or larger than the ring that you see here. But what absolutely has to be the case is it has to be fully conjugated, meaning when we say conjugated here, that it has that pattern of alternating single bonds and double bonds all the way around. So single bond, pi bond, single bond, pi bond, all the way around so that it is fully conjugated. There's no sp3 carbon or sp carbon within this ring system. All of the carbons are sp2 because every single carbon atom is part of one carbon-carbon double bond within that ring system. So that is how you will recognize and describe a molecule as an annulene in general, is it needs to have a fully conjugated ring. Now from there, in order to name annulenes, the way that we go about doing this is we count the number of carbon atoms in the ring and tag the term annulene onto the end of it. So to name, any molecule as an annulene, what you're going to do is name it as X, and X is in brackets, and then the word annulene. And the X here is equal to the number of carbon atoms in the ring. And the ring has to be fully conjugated because by definition, when we use the term annulene, that means the ring is fully conjugated. It's a full system of sp2 carbons. So let's go ahead and name the annulene that I have shown the structure of here. I have no idea how many carbon atoms are in the ring, so I'm just going to go around and number this ring to come up with the name of this molecule. And since the molecule is symmetrical and fully conjugated, it doesn't matter where I started numbering this. I'm just numbering all the way around. And there are a grand total of, I count, 18 carbon atoms in here. It will always be an even number because we have pairs of carbons forming these alkene groups. And so 18 carbons means that this molecule is named as 18 annulene. And yeah, in theory, I could give you a quiz question where I ask you to draw out 18 annulene. I probably wouldn't go that route with a question though, because these are pretty challenging to draw out on paper because you'll notice that you have to get the symmetry just right to end up with these geometrically pleasing shapes. And um, frankly, that's drawing these geometrically pleasing shapes is something you could do with some software, not something that you would necessarily be um, wanting to draw out on paper. And so generally, if I were giving you a question like this, I would give you the structure and I would say provide the name of this molecule. And what you need to do in order to accomplish that is just look at the structure, count the number of carbon atoms, make sure it's a fully conjugated system, and then use the first term here in brackets to indicate how many carbon atoms there are in this conjugated system, and then the term annulene to specify that molecule is a fully conjugated ring. And you may be wondering, since I said that the term aniline can be used to describe any fully conjugated ring. You may be wondering whether benzene can be described as an aniline. You would be right if you said that yes, benzene can be described as an aniline. Benzene would be six aniline since there are six carbon atoms in that fully conjugated ring. So this applies both to our simplest examples of molecules that have alternating single bond, double bond patterns within the ring, as well as more complex scenarios. But what's going to be true for all of them is that they're all going to have rings of continuous sp2 carbon atoms. There aren't going to be any heteroatoms in the ring or anything like that. The term annulene refers to specifically these systems where we have just carbon atoms in the ring. And generally when we use the term annulene, we're referring to these rather large structures 
um, in molecules. And so with that, we conclude our discussion of going about naming different molecules that are going to come into play in our discussion of aromaticity within this chapter. And so what we're going to look at in the next few videos is how do we go about recognizing whether a molecule is aromatic or not. We've mentioned these anulenes, we've mentioned benzene, we mentioned so-called aromatic heterocycles. How do we know that some of these molecules are aromatic? What are the criteria used to assign that? And what does it mean when we say something is aromatic? That's what we'll be tackling in the upcoming few videos.